right, here we go, you guys. I am just leaving the electric connection. Yup, 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 I stay over here. Well, not really, but I definitely had to get my left hand grip. There go, now that I'm saying that, my butt. I had to get my uh, left hand grip replaced. Lewis done that for me. At the same time, he uh, uh, changed out a uh, LED flasher. And then I put the new LED bright uh, blinker bulbs for the back. They are super bright, man. I mean, goodness to gracious. How yellow can yellow be? Doggone this daggum heated seat is hot. Goodness. But I hadn't had heated seats in a while. Not that I need them right now, but as I say before, this is a feature on this bike. And I want to keep my features. That's what I paid the money for, the features. So, he got that squared away for me. And, uh, just checking some things out here. Alright, y'all ready? Here we go. Ride with me. <laughs> I get uh settled down and get some time, man, right? Ain't that a funky light? Okay, here we go. Yeah, I'm not much into the extra lights that go on the uh the pretty lights I call them. But I'm definitely into brighter headlights. And not so bright where you're blinding people, Michael. Uh, Captain Beaker, but the lights that you know that, that you can see, and uh, I'm into the lights that's going to help people see me when I'm stopping using my turn signals. You know, all we got is uh, what we try to tell people with our turn signals. That's how you talk to people. You used to you tell somebody you about to make a left turn or a right turn. You use your doggone blinkers. Nowadays, people want you to read their mind. I'm not a mind reader. I don't know if you get ready to make a hard right or you get ready to snatch it to the left. Throw a blinker out there, let somebody know something. But I definitely want that because um, I don't want to get hit from the back. My buddy Michael James got hit from the back not too long ago. Tore up a damn good motorcycle. And uh, for that matter, Old Smooth got hit the other day on his uh, M109, but that was strictly uh, uh, straight up and down. She was not paying attention. On the phone, if you will. Didn't do no damage, didn't knock him off, but she did bump him. It wasn't a, it wasn't a hit, it was a bump. But I'm here at home, man, to go jump in the bed so I can ride one of these motorcycles to work. All right, ride with me, y'all. Ride with me. Maybe I can tell y'all one of these stories. <laughs> I had old Michael James tell me he had his F6B. And he was telling me that he got a gold wing now, that the F6B rides different than a gold wing. I'm like, man, it's a gold wing. 
He said, no, it rides different, Slappy. And I kind of let him do his little talk, and I'm like, man, how much different can it be? So uh, now that I have both, I have to say, Michael James, Virginia, AKA Virginia, I have to say that you are right. It does ride different. They kind of give you two different feels. And the feeling I get, I like them both. I like the way that F6B feel. I definitely like the way my Goldwing feel. Guy asked me, he said, you gonna ride the Goldwing when you go to Colorado? But my answer to that is no. I'm, I, well, I guess there's no way and yes. I'm riding my Goldwing, my full-fledged Goldwing. And uh, what I got the F6B as a just-in-case. If something goes wrong, or maybe a short trip or something like that, I'll ride the F6B. But if something goes wrong with my Goldwing, that's going to be my uh, Plan B bike. I got it wired up. I got it, um, I've got the uh, trailer uh, hitch. The trailer hitch uh, bolted up. She's ready to go now. She is ready for whatever I'm ready for. No, so, that is my plan, my man. Uh. Here we go. 275, downtown Knoxville. I don't know what the day is. I think it's Tuesday something. Maybe the sixth. Well, one of the main reasons I will be riding my Goldwing, which is this bike right here, to uh, when I do my road trips, I spend a whole bunch of money on this Traxion suspension. I got this Goldwing riding real good right now. I got the all balls and the, the steering head. I got the super brace on the front and I got the Traxion suspension. So this thing rides good. I've got no complaints with the way it rides. I got the Healy bars on here as well. So if it's time for a good road trip, I got my CB I can talk on. I got a trunk. You know, I got all this stuff right here, but the F6B definitely, if need be, I'll strap this bad boy to my trailer and I'll drag it down the road. I'm ready, y'all. All right. I'm headed to the house. Hook him, slap him. Ah, hook him. You know what? Now riding on this on this car tire, I have to say it's a softer ride. It feels good now. It's a softer ride though. I'm definitely gonna put a car tire on that F6B. Come on. And I'm coming down Alco Highway. And old Black Magic back here behind me in his uh, navigator. That reminds me of a story. <laughs> Another ham bone story. Come on. So, we were leaving again about 4 o'clock. So, we was heading towards Oklahoma City, first league. From Knoxville, it was about a thousand miles. So, uh, I did an iron butt and didn't even know it. But anyway, back to the story. So, Black Magic was going to meet us on the 40. Hambone was late as usual. So, we went ahead and left. We're going up the road. 
made our first gas stop, so I text everybody on the text list. When I go on the road trip, I put everybody on the road trip on the text list, and that's how we communicate. And uh, told them where we was at the gas stop, the second gas stop. Well, Hambone, he ended up catching us in Nashville. But well, he was saying, man, I seen Black Magic when I was going up the road. He said, is he going with us? I said, yeah, he's supposed to. He said, well, he's back there somewhere. So by that time, he ended up catching us. He rides a 1500 uh, Gold Wing trike. So we take off rolling. We get down there, Oklahoma City, caught up, caught up with Woodrow. And that week, when I tell you, somebody was left behind every week. I mean, every day of the week. And I don't mean like we left them. Well, we say we're going to leave at 6 a.m. You might get three or four of them say they want to sleep in. Well, everybody's grown men. And that's what they, you know, that, that's fine with me. So they would uh, sleep in and, you know, three or four of them will leave. So in other words, it might be two separate groups. So we have a hotel set. I send a text out where we was at. So they might show up at the hotel three or four hours later. But every time, every day, somebody wanted to sleep a little later, wanted to do something a little different, and, that, and that's fine, but just texting each other every night we all slept in the same hotel. You know, we all got to see each other. Ain't gonna make sure everybody was good. We got to Las Vegas, and uh, the hotel only had like rooms, for like like four rooms. So four of us stayed there. Two of us uh, in the group, they had to go to another hotel, and then another two went to another hotel. But we, we was gonna be in Las Vegas for a total of three nights, or two nights. A total of two nights. So me and Woodrow get an Uber. I love to use my Uber when I'm, uh, you know, traveling on the motorcycle. Because it's kind of hard to try to find certain places. And you don't know where you're going. You got cars jumping on you. And so I get an Uber and go do my, uh, my Explorer, touring around. Well, me and Uber got uh, me and uh, Woodrow got an Uber. Went down there to uh, the Pawn Stars. Then went to Count's Customs. I stopped over there at Roy, uh, not Roy Jones, but uh, Money Mayweather. His little uh, establishment, that's what we'll call it. Called the Girl Collection, y'all can look that up. And then we eased over there to uh, um, I think it was Caesar's Palace Casino. So we go in the casino. I had about $100 I was going to play around with. So I'm on the slot machine, the one-armed bandit. So I'm messing around with that. And I'm almost down to 40 bucks on the nickel machine. So I said, well, I use this $40 up, and then I go do something else. Well, bam, I hit a damn jackpot. I didn't hit the top jackpot but I hit the $6,000 jackpot. I'm like, oh my goodness. So they gave me $6,000 in cash. I'm like, wow, they, they will keep playing. Maybe you can hit the jackpot. Shit, I took that money and hauled ass. I looked around like I stole the damn money. I took that money and hauled ass, you hear me? And I told Woodrow, man, let's go. <laughs> so Woodrow came on. I said, let's get us something good to eat. It's on me, man. I just hit my $6,000. He said, really? I said, yeah. He said, oh, man. So we got us some kind of Mexican food, tacos, or something or other. And it was in June. And you know that humidity, that dry heat, will kind of sneak up on you. So I ate my little tacos and all that. Get back to the room, got a nap. Then we was going to go to Fremont Street. Boy, I got the Fremont Street, and I'm telling you the truth. Boy, I got sick as a daggum dog. I'm like, what is going on? Man, I barely got an Uber, barely got to the hotel room. I, it was coming out of both ends, not to gross anybody out. 
at the same damn time. So I'm sick of the dog. We supposed to be leaving five o'clock in the morning. I just I just text everybody, look man, y'all go ahead and go on. We're supposed to go to Yosemite and start heading towards uh, San Francisco. I said, y'all go ahead on, man. I said, I'm sick of the dog. Ain't no way in the blue blazes. I'm gonna be able to, I'm gonna be able to uh, go. And everybody text back, man, now, nah, Slapper, we here with you. We got your back. You know, whenever you get the feeling better, we'll leave. I guess one good thing about it is we was in Las Vegas. <laughs> so it ain't like we was in Dagum. Jackson, Mississippi, or Buck Tussle, Alabama, or whatever, some old country-ass town with nothing to do. We had plenty to do. So I stayed another night, and old Woodrow, boy, he took care of me like a son. You hear me? Oh, man, he, he got me water, Sprite, and I said, uh, I had put on Facebook, you know, I was sick. Everybody said, get Pedialyte, Pedialyte. So Woodrow went and got me some Pedialyte. Well, I never knew that Pedialyte make chocolate and vanilla flavors. He got me chocolate Pedialyte. Don't y'all ever, ever get y'all children no chocolate Pedialyte. I just held it up to my nose and smelled it and throw it up everywhere, which is good. But my goodness, what don't, what don't you dare buy nobody no chocolate Pedialyte? But, that was my uh, little story on texting everybody and how we moved around on a road trip. It's through a group text that I create and, and somebody might be asking somebody else a question, but you ask one question, we all get it and you know, we all can answer. Somebody might be busy. Well, all right, children. There'll be some more stories coming up. Peace. Recording. Ah, man, I got all the horses in the stable, y'all. Y'all see that 64 Oldsmobile? Uh, he goes in the garage. Here's your brother. Here's your brother there, buddy. Hey, stay tuned for more videos like this. Thanks for watching. I'm ready.